Hello, I guess I'm back again with another video and uh, I recently had to make a whiskey glass not unlike the ones you're looking at here so I thought it might be an interesting one to work through in real time. Um, this one I'm going to use 3ds Max to model the glass. I'm going to use Marmoset Toolbag for materials and rendering um, and I'm going to try, try out some of the new uh, refraction refinements in Toolbag 4.05 Beta. And this is publicly available. You can grab it if you want to try it out. Uh, so this is current as of December 2022. So um, I'd asked Midjourney to come up with some concepts for whiskey glass. You can see them here. Um, some of them are pretty standard. Uh, some of them are a little bit unusual, maybe a little bit impractical, but I quite like the look of the one up here in the top left. And the prompt that I used for this was, uh, a clean, empty, contemporary whiskey glass, unusual shape, studio lighting, no liquid, no whiskey, dash dash V space four, um, just telling Midjourney to use uh, the more realistic um, AI. So this one at the top left, um, you know, even though the curve on the top here is a little impractical for drinking, maybe uh, I thought it was uh, I thought it was unusual. I thought it was quite pretty. So there's a couple of things that we can take from this um, AI image here um, that are pretty common on studio lighting setups, product shots for for whiskey bottles, whiskey glasses, things like that. Um, and the first thing that I kind of notice here is this kind of white gradient on each side. And those are reflection cards. And they are kind of key to selling um, the look of a very clean um, piece of glassware for something like, like whiskey. Um, the next thing is this kind of tube-like feature on the top here. And you get this with glasses quite a lot. Um, and again, it, it's quite important in selling it off as something that's real. Um, the next thing would be the refraction, I suppose. And you can see down here, we've got impressions of, of refraction. And there are values that you can use, physical values for glass and for liquids like whiskey. You can look them up and you can plug them in. But really, we want to balance that, um, especially when we're using real-time renderers. We want to balance those actual values with the kind of approximations and the shortcuts that real-time renderers take to um, give you results quickly. So what I tend to go for is just a kind of a darkening in these areas here so that's kind of what we'll be we'll be plugging away with and i've also got some context um shots here of real glasses so you can see stuff like uh, the type of lighting involved um depth of field um and this this is the darkening that i mean in very thick areas of the glass so we'll be trying to to dial all those in so with that much said let's move over to 3ds max I'm going to drag in my reference onto my reference planes script here by Christoph Bülter, which is super useful. Um, this is available on Script Spot. And what I'm going to do is you can see how I've got my reference image here. It's sitting on a plane. In the top viewport, I'm just going to pull this back a little bit so that it's not quite on this axis. And that's just because we're going to be kind of drawing from this view and I want whatever I draw to appear on front of this plane just it's a little bit easier to work with okay so over to the front viewport here and i'm going to use splines and lathing for this um, so it should be pretty easy to uh to set up what we need is a cross section of the glass and then the cross section is going to be lathed or swept around an axis radially to create this shape so it works pretty well for for glassware so let's go ahead to the create panel over here Let's choose line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approximate the curves here with as few points as I can as possible. So I'm just gonna draw corner to corner and it's gonna look something like this. So click, um, maybe click about here, here and here. And you might be tempted to go straight across here, but really we've got, a, we've got this nice bit of detail on the inside here. So again, I'm going to click to about here and then up into the middle okay and if we have a look at how that's represented that's the kind of rough shape that we have there so with that done let's go ahead and call this glass and we're going to go into sub object mode here and we're going to tweak 
these vertices to make them uh, to make them rounder, so we can we can approximate our shape a little more closely here. So uh, let's start with this one here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose Bezier corner, and that gives me two handles either side of the vertex, which I can then manipulate. And I've got um, X and Y uh, toggle as my axis constraints up there. And let's turn this on. And I'm just going to play with these handles until they more closely match the profile or the silhouette of what we have going on here. It can be a little tricky to see. But we're working with an AI image anyway, so it's not going to be perfect. Okay, pretty good. And then pull this down slightly. Again, right click, turn this to a Bezier corner. And just make sure we've got that as close as possible. Okay, let's move on to this piece here. Same deal. Bezier corner. Bezier corner. I'm just playing with those handles until I can get them pretty nice and this is going to sit flat on the ground so let's get that cleared a little, up a little bit yep pretty good happy with that so what we've got to do in a case like this where we want the we're going to use ray trace for fractions we want the geometry to be as close to real world as possible so we actually have to think about the inside of the glass here as well so the way i like to do this with splines is to just go ahead and choose uh, sub object spline or maybe sub object segment might be better for here and with those selected i'm just going to hold shift and drag those out a little so now i have a, a new spline that represents the inside and as before i'm going to make sure that this kind of tapers up a little tighter at the top here so the thickness of the glass um, is less up here so it's thinner here and thicker down here and I'm also going to go in and manipulate these bezier handles to thicken up the base here a little more too and that should provide some interesting refractions as we go up because the the glass is kind of thicker here Okay, I'm going to add, uh, just add a, a straight spline in here. So I'm, I'm hitting create spline uh, in the sub object. Left click and bring that over. And then to make sure that this spline is actually joined on here, let's select these two verts um, in the sub object rollout. I'm going to hit fuse. And that doesn't actually combine the verts. It just puts one on top of each other in 3D space and then hit weld. And that's going to make one single continuous spline out of what we've done so far. Okay, so I'm just going to make this a little bit more elegant here, get rid of that, the straightness of that line going across. I'm taking some artistic license here. Making sure that my axis constraint is set to X and Y there, or I won't be able to pull in the directions I need to. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so that's nearly done, but there's a, a critical part that we haven't done, and that's this tube along here. So what I normally do for this is go to the circle spline and just drag out something that kind of approximates the radius of this kind of tube on the top here. Then what I'll do is I'm going to combine this spline with this spline. And to make sure that they combine properly and easily, they have to overlap. So if we combine them like this, it's going to be trickier to delete parts and join them up. But as long as this spline overlaps with this spline, it actually gets quite easy. So over here in the subobject rollout, I am going to go to um, I am going to go to attach, and I'm going to click on the circular spline. So now this is one continuous spline, but I do want to get rid of these overlaps or we'll be left with overlapping geometry. So now I'm going to sub-object spline, and I'm going to look for trim, which is down here. And trim is like a Boolean kind of for spline. So anything I click on will be removed and a common vertex will be added. So for example, if I click on this area here, 
it's removed and common vertex is added here. Same over here, click on this overlapping part and it has been removed and a new um, overlapping vertex has been added there. And then I can click on this part. And as you can see, all of that has been cleaned up. The spline no longer intersects up here and we have one single spline for lathing. But we do have to check something. We go back in here to vertex and just click once here. You can see as I move this around, these are not actually welded. So what I want to do is marquee select there so I get any verts that are unwelded and just hit fuse and weld. And I just hit fuse beforehand because if the verts are so far from each other that they're outside of the weld threshold, fuse will bring them back together. And I'm also going to do it on this side, even though there doesn't appear to be an issue. And when you're working with splines like this, you will see that one of the verts is colored yellow. And that yellow vert is known as the first vert of a spline. And there should only be one of those on a contiguous spline. So if you see more than one, it means that your object isn't welded. But sometimes the yellow vert can be kind of hid under a white vert and it's tricky to track down. So I think we're pretty good. Um, let us just try a few of these more, make sure everything is welded up. They are. And what we can do is just to reduce this hard line here, we can go in here and we can select these and we can maybe kind of fillet them just to take that hard edge off. And likewise, what we might want to do is go down here and fillet these because you, you just wouldn't get those extremely hard edges on glass. So let's put something like that, enough of a flat surface that it can touch the ground. And I might just even these guys up here a little. That looks pretty good. And you might want to do the same in this instance here, just to get that really harsh angle out of there. Something like that. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, the other thing is that we can kind of make this as low poly as we like if we change the um, interpolation of this guy. Now, I've messed up my menus over here, so that means interpolation is going to be down the bottom here. But uh, if we change the amount of steps here, you can see how it changes the number of steps between each vertex. Like our vertices are still there. It's just the, inter the interpolation of the spline has changed between them. So we want this to be, you know, reasonably uh, detailed. And we can always put a, a turbo smooth on top as well. So let's, let's, um, let's go with a value of three for this. And that should preserve everything that we're trying to do. So the next thing is to uh, add the lathe modifier. And it's not unusual um, for this kind of thing to happen. It's, it obviously isn't right. But if we look at the pivot point of the spline that we have here, um, it's kind of not where we need it to be. So if I go back here and I just change the pivot point and I kind of put the pivot point over here towards the center where we want to be and then go back up to the lathe modifier. Actually, I might have to add a new one. There we go. Now we've got something that is kind of approaching what we want here. Okay, so there's a couple of things to do. Obviously, the normals appear to be flipped here, so we can flip normals on the modifier. And now you get something that definitely looks a bit better. Um, we've got the interior, we've got the exterior. Um, and sometimes what you can do is you can weld the core as well. And it's not unusual to get open edges down here. If you're not particular, not particularly careful about um, where you put your vertices, which I haven't been. And sometimes welding the core is enough to get rid of those. But what I like to do afterwards is really just go in and I will uh, just edit that as a poly and just close up those uh, those edges. Okay, should just be able to collapse or weld these down. It's on the outside. And then we also have this one on the inside. And these are overlapping at the moment. That's why there's that kind of weird darkening going on. So a quick weld will uh, will put all those to rights. Okay, pretty good. So what else have we got to... Look, I can see some smoothing group issues there. So at this point, why don't we just go ahead and set the element's entire smoothing group. Clear all to one. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be fine. So that opens it up itself. Obviously, we want to get this faceted look off the top, but that leaves itself pretty well towards um, some smoothing later on. But before we get to smoothing, let's just compare these side by side. And we've got a pretty good approximation here. 
um, including this area underneath. Uh, but what we want to do is get that kind of um, strange kind of curvedness in there. And there, there are numerous ways to do that. Um, in this case, what I'll probably do is just grab these top two rows here um, and I'll add an FFD 4x4x4 and I will just pull this down a little bit. Hopefully it won't get too warped. Don't want that tube getting out of shape. Something like that doesn't look too bad. So that gives us our kind of a weird, not sure I love it, but it's, um, you know, well, it's part of the exercise. Alrighty. So at this point, you could um, add some UVs on there. Um, if you wanted to have a glass that had, you know, fingerprints or something like that, um, you would need those UVs. Or, you know, if you wanted to do some frosting on the glass or something like that. Um, so I'm going to just leave these as are. In fact, what I might do is just do something you should never do, and that is just do uh, an automatically uh, flatten mapping and just drop that down there. Um, it's not pretty or elegant, but it's uh, it's going to do for now just to have them. And then lastly, what we want to do is we want to uh, smooth the whole thing out with a turbo smooth and to see how this looks. We want to have, don't want to have any facets. We want this to, to play nicely. So we can go up again and um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. So with that done, what we can do is, um, well, I will save this. And I will then collapse to an editable poly. Um, and what I want to do at this stage is I want to actually make some liquid for the glass. I was almost forgetting to make some liquid for the glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to the inside and we have some kind of dirty looking polygons there, but that's okay. I don't think it's going to affect us. And using wireframe mode, I am going to make a selection um, for the amount of fluid that I want to have in the glass. Okay. So take that down. Maybe something like that would be okay. And I'm going to detach these faces. Detach as clone. And that gives me the basis for my liquid volume. So what I can do here is flip the normals. And before I go any further, I'm going to add a push modifier. And I'm just going to bring this in a little bit along its normals. Uh, maybe minus point not 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 one no, i didn't really see a difference there so minus point not not one so i think that just moved in slightly there and that's all we want we just want to avoid any faces kind of coplanar overlapping because that can mess with the uh, refraction so i'm just leaving a small gap between the liquid and the outside. Okay, that should be fine. Convert that to an editable poly. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to subobject border and I'm going to just hold shift and pull in, holding shift each time some rows here. And you can do as many of these as you, you think you want or you think you need before I get to the center here and I'll just cap it right in the center. So what we've got to do is we've got to create the meniscus in the liquid. Um, so what I can do is just, I've got this center one selected here. And I'll just grow this out. And I'll just pull everything down a little. Shrink that down, pull that down a little as well. Okay, so we just want to create the smallest of lips here. At the very edge, we could probably go a little more. Flow connect that. And pull it down some more. Okay. 
That should give us what we need. And last thing I want to do is just set a separate smoothing group for this topmost vert or the topmost uh, faces here. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's give that a smoothing group of two and select invert and give everything else a smoothing group of one. And it's going to just separate that. And that's basically our whiskey um, liquid. So let's call that liquid. Again, if you wanted to have a couple of bubbles in there or um, some, I don't know, uh, particulate matter or whatever it might be, you might want UVs on this, but I don't think it's going to affect us too badly um, if we don't. So last thing to do is to set two materials. This one is going to be called whiskey. And I'll just give it an orange-ish hue. And that go in there. And this one over is going to be called glass. And that's going to go on there. So I can right click on the glass object properties, make it see through, and you can get an impression of the volume of whiskey inside the glass. All right. So a couple of just last minute uh, checks before we go over to uh, tool bag. Let's hide that, bring up our grid. Check the uh, scale of this. So as we can see here, when I measure it, it's five meters by five meters. It's way too big. So what we really want is something that's about 11 centimeters high. So if I bring in this uh, um, cylinder for reference here, the height here is going to need to be about 0.11 meters. Uh, the radius doesn't matter hugely, but it's probably going to be something like that. So once our glass and whiskey is inside this volume, it should be pretty good. So I'm just going to scale all that down. Compare it to this guy over here. It can come up a little bit, maybe. Okay, happy enough with that. Let's remeasure. Using the measure dialog here. Yeah, it's about 10 centimeters on the Z axis, so I'm happy enough with that. Lastly, reset the transform on both of these. Convert to inevitable poly. We get rid of this. And we'll take these guys and put them on the origin over here are pretty close to it. And that just makes our setup inside tool bag a little bit easier. Okay, so before I want before I leave here, I want to actually just create a, a little backdrop. So we'll go to the left viewport. Zoom in here. I'm going to create a box. Like that. I'm going to go. Convert it to an editable poly. I'm going to go to sub-object face mode and grab all of these. Delete them. So all I have left is this L shape. I'm going to flip the normals on this so we get the inside. And I'm just going to make it plenty big for what we might want to do. And it's easy to scale inside tool bag too if we need to. Let's grab that edge and I'm going to chamfer this. A few more subdivisions. And that's going to do nicely. Okay. And lastly, just add some UVs to this just in case I want to do something else with it later. Uh, make it into fabric or something like that. There we go. I will planar map that, review a line, and then just unfold that and that should be pretty good in terms of texture distribution yep perfect okay and that's going to be our backdrop cool let's reset the transform on that and we're good to go convert everything to an editable poly and i will go and i will export this as an FBX to over to tool bag. Okay, so over to tool bag and you'll see I'm using the 405 beta and it's got some of these new studio uh, environments in here, which could be fun to play with. So let's go ahead and start getting set up here. Let's go file, import model, and it's going to be called 
version three, which is this guy. Oh, there we go. It's kind of everything we need right there. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to um, change the field of view a little bit. I want it to be a little more zoomed in here. And as you can see, we don't have any shadows or anything like that in the scene at the moment. This is the, the real time um, version, the kind of speedy version of, of rendering in Toolbag. So to turn on ray tracing, we can press Control and OR. And now you can see we're getting shadows from the environment and we're getting uh, lots of nice interactivity. I'm holding shift and right click here to move the environment around. You get this very painterly feel at the moment. So let's go ahead and start setting up our um, environments here and our backdrop. So the first, um, I'm going to change this to background, the name of this material. Drop it on. I want it to have a high roughness and I want it to be a little darker than we're seeing there already and also a little warmer. Maybe something like that. Okay, cool. The next thing is going to be our glass. Um, obviously this looks metallic at the moment just from the way that it came in here. All right, so let's get going on glass. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the transmission over here to refraction. Okay, then what I wanna do down here is change the reflectivity to metalness. And I'm gonna bring the metalness down to zero and that will start to give us the transparency that we need. Okay, um, I'm going to uncheck derive refractive index from reflectivity and that just gives us a bit more individual control over the roughness. And then we can start dialing in the depth over here. And what you see is um, as I change the depth, you can see that get a kind of a very dark smoky effect with a low depth that decreases um, as you move this depth slider up. So this is all looking a bit like frosted glass at the moment, which is really not what I want. Uh, let me disable this. DLSS for a second. Okay. Um, I need to change the roughness. So the reason we're getting this kind of very, very rough, almost like sandblasted glass effect is because of the reflection roughness here. So let's take this right back down and we'll start to get something that better resembles a glass. Okay. Um, so now the refract refractive index here, and this is the value that I was kind of talking about at the very start where you can change the refraction index and you can see it here. And I think the refractive index for glass is about 1.52. And the index of reflection for whiskey is about 1.356, but obviously we have to tune it so that it looks good. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the whiskey for now, just so we can see the glass a little bit better here. Okay, cool. Um, now we have the, the depth that we can play with. And if you could bake a thickness map for your model, um, which you can do in Max or, or whatever your model may be, you could bake it so that this area down here um, has a, a thicker depth and it, it and it darkens a little bit more. I want to, Make sure that, that it's not too dark in our particular image here. Okay, um, this is starting to look like the type of glass that we want, I guess. Why don't I dial up that refractive index to 1.5, see if it doesn't, doesn't change a whole lot there. Um, and let's drop the whiskey in next. Actually, it might be easier at this point to um, just copy the glass material call this one whiskey and just change the IOR which I believe was 1.356 okay and we need to get some color in there too so let's bring back our liquid drop that in there and maybe get rid of the glass just so it's not super confusing. Nice caustic patterns there are being picked up. 
and see how we can tweak the color here. So some of these controls have changed in the latest beta. So I'm just going to have to kind of fiddle around here and work stuff out. And get a nice, I suppose, oaky color for the whiskey. Okay, let's bring back the glass and see what we look like. Now, what you'll notice now is that when we look down, you get the kind of color of the whiskey. But when we're looking at the whiskey through the glass here, everything has gone really dark. So what we need to do is really up the number of samples that we're using in the scene. So um, if you see here, um, I've got bounces set to one and transmission set to four. Let me take up a couple of bounces here and really ramp up the transmission. Let's go up to maybe 16, 17, something like that. And now it's working as you might expect. Cool. So this studio environment that I'm using is actually kind of throwing off a little bit more in terms of directional illumination than, than I would like. So I'm going to go back to the library and there's one in here that I like to use for internal scenes um, and it's called Japanese Apartment. And um, quite like this one in terms of the the warmth that it gives off and even some of the ref reflections are, are quite nice here as well um, and sometimes i like to drag a directional light in too maybe from up here and that has also helped to brighten up the scene a little bit so let's soften those shadows we also have some control over temperature here which is which is quite nice in this latest version and i'll also um create a light just move up here a little bit just hit the light button create a spotlight coming down there and i really kind of want this to hit the area behind the glass and give us a nice kind of a hot spot there Just an impression. Okay, so our whiskey glass is looking pretty good at this stage. Um, what I would like to do is, and it's very, very key, and if we go back to the reference for a second, see what, you know, the, some of these context shots here and the mid-journey ideas, they, they kind of have this, you know, these two white gradients either side. So let's try and bring those in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my, my camera in place there and I'm going to move into a perspective view. And you can kind of see a little bit more what we have going on here. And I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to plugins, generate primitives, and I'm going to create a plane. Um, and this is going to come in at, what, five meters by five meters. And I don't want anything close to that. So let's try 0.4 and 0.4 and hit add. And our plane has been created on the ground plane. Here it is. And I'm going to just rotate that. And it's, it's blocking some of the light from the HDR environment here, but that's fine. I'm going to create a new material. And this one is going to be called light. I'm going to make it completely rough. I'm going to unlock emissive down here. I'm going to change the glow to white. And I'm going to ramp up this intensity. And when that's dropped onto a plane here, you can see that because of the ray tracing in the scene, it actually acts like a light as well as a reflection. So I can bring that over a little more, bring it up. And likewise, Control and D to duplicate the geometry. Bring this one over here. And if we go back now to our camera view, in fact, why don't we split the viewport You can see that now we have these two 
nice reflection areas over here and because it's ray traced and it's not screen space you know we can move it about and we can do this stuff off camera that might not necessarily be visible otherwise and uh, we can tease out the best kind of reflection that we want from this area let's make that two-sided And that's also bouncing some some nice light into the scene. Okay. So now we can go back to a single viewport. And it's getting a little bit overexposed, the image here. So now we can um, do some camera processing. We could maybe try taking the exposure down a little bit here. Um, and these are extra controls as well. I like these shadows, mid-tones controls. right there in the viewport which is pretty cool contrast saturation maybe a little bit of bloom not too much definitely some vignetting make this look more like a product shot um probably a little bit of distortion so these are very bright reflections here so if i dial chromatic aberration right the way up here you can see you get these this kind of very ugly artifacting but if we just dial it back so that it's almost there, I think that definitely helps. Next thing I want to do is add a little bit of depth of field. Uh, go back into my perspective view here. And what I might do is just grab the whiskey glass here and make a copy of it. Control and D. I also grab the background there by accident. We can lose that. Put that in behind a little and i'll also rotate it let me go down to draft quality here so you can see what i'm doing because it does have that kind of weirdness on the on the top and it'd be nice to just show that off a little better back to the main camera full quality and let's just line these guys up again here okay pretty happy with that um and then some depth of field like we saw in the initial reference uh, context images here see how these ones in the background are nicely you know nice bit of depth to the scene they're nicely blurred out so let's try and get a little bit of that in there got focus we're going to use ray traced and just middle mouse click on an area of the geometry here that you want to be in focus and i found that you know this kind of area here um should give pretty good balance between sharpness and out of focusness if that's a word see how this resolves out okay nice so it's getting denoised it's also still a little bit blurry so i think i'll change the denoising um just a little bit so the denoise strength is set to one here and with denoising off i don't know if you can see this but there's a fair bit of noise creeping back in we just want to keep an element of the grain 0.82 is a value that works pretty well um so with that said i think we're pretty much done that was a whiskey glass from ai to 3d um thank you for watching